Cardiac tissue is excitable not only by action potentials originating in the sinus node or other pacemaking cells, but also by external stimuli that drive cells to their activation threshold. Any stimulus that drives the membrane potential to its activation threshold will stimulate an action potential, which will then subsequently propagate to neighboring cells and ultimately depolarize connected myocardium. This is the main principle behind artificial pacemakers. That is, they apply an external electrical current that depolarizes cells in contact with a lead tip to generate an action potential that then spreads throughout the myocardium. In the rest of this lecture, we will focus on the components and some variations of artificial pacemakers. In general, pacemakers consist of a pulse generator, or CAN, which contains the electronics, the battery, and the leads. The pacemaker is often implanted under the clavicle. The pulse generator is typically covered with titanium, which is well tolerated by the surrounding tissues. As its name implies, the pulse generator creates the electric current needed to stimulate the myocardium. The leads deliver a depolarizing pulse to the myocardium. These leads are also capable of sensing intrinsic electrical activity, which we will discuss further in a later lecture. The leads are introduced into a, one of a larger vein, such as the subclavian vein, and then they're guided into the heart where they contact and interface with the endocardium. So what you can see here is you have your uh, pulse generator, okay, your pacemaker here, the pulse generator, and from that you can see that you have these leads that are then transversing and coming through this uh, vein here okay into the superior vena cava into the right atrium and here's a right atrial lead okay and so there's the right atrial lead and then you have one down here in the right ventricle so this is the right atrium and this is the right ventricle okay so you can see the leads placed uh, right there now the pacemaker battery is used to deliver pacing pulses sensing meaning that they can analyze electrical activity of the heart and they can store cardiac biosignals the pacemaker is often powered by a lithium battery that has a lifespan of about five to 10 years. If the pacing requirement or stimulus threshold is high for a patient, this may actually shorten the battery lifespan. Once the battery is depleted, the entire system needs to be replaced. Now, insulation materials separate the conductor cables and the lead tip electrodes. The leads can be designed as coaxial or co-radial, depending on the relationship between the cable. Now, coaxial leads consist of a tube within a tube, whereas co-radial leads consist of side-by-side -side coils, okay? And if you're interested in what that looks like, you can simply search for that online, okay, for an image of those, okay? But we won't get into all those details here. So these are the lead tips that we're uh, talking about, and these wires, these leads that we see here are can be co-radial or coaxial, okay? Now, the last thing I want to discuss here is lead fixation, which is essentially how the lead interfaces with the myocardium. Lead fixation to the myocardium can be active or passive. If active, the cathode has an electrically active helix at its tip that is inserted into the myocardium for mechanical stability. If it's passive, then the cathode is not inserted into the myocardium. Instead, electrically inert tines anchor the leads. So if you look here, we have active fixation and passive fixation. And what we are now blowing up is this image here. Okay, so imagine your lead here. This right here in red is your myocardium. So that's your myocardium. And what you have are two different variants of lead fixation. You have the active form, okay? And again, you have your anode here, okay? and then your cathode. And what you have is this one in the active form is pretty much screwing in or inserted right into the myocardium. So notice how it inserts itself right into that myocardium, okay? And then there's the passive form or passive fixation, which is like a hook in which you have these tines that are here that are pretty much uh, interfacing with the myocardium, but not actually inserted into them. Okay, so you have these inner tines anchoring the leads in passive fixation. Now, disruption of the conductor elements can result in high impedance, such as from a fracture.
while disruption in insulation materials can result in low impedance due to short circuiting breach, such as from an insulation breach. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's review what we discussed before we end here. So basic things that you want, want to know about are the pacemaker components, the pulse generator that houses the power source, which is the battery, the electronic circuitry that exists in each one, and there's different software and algorithms that each of these pacemakers may have. They have the lead system that we talked about that connects the pulse generator to the endocardium. And then we talked about lead variants and lead fixation variants. The lead variants, remember, they can be either coaxial, okay, or you may have these co-radial forms, okay. And you can look those up if you're interested in what those, how they're arranged, but the coaxial are pretty much a tube within a tube and the co-radial side-by-side coils, and that's how they're arranged. Now, lead fixation was the final thing we mentioned, and this could be either active or passive. Remember, active is when it's essentially inserting itself into the myocardium, okay, and that helps with the mechanical stability, or you can have this passive form, which is like a hook, and it uses these tines that essentially help it uh, to stabilize in that sense, okay, to the endocardium. Well, that's the end of this lecture. We discussed pacemaker components, including lead variants and lead fixation. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay, so completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay, these are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book okay and then you also have the pocket guide available so you can choose which format they are the same thing both these uh, book and the pocket guide uh, different formats uh, i really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go now with the book you also get videos so notice these are the videos okay and these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic and it's used now among many institutions so use uh, check that out now what it also includes are calipers so yes you get calipers with this course okay um i don't know anyone else that offers that but you do get calipers i think they're very helpful and they can uh you know if you know how to use them correctly uh can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on okay and then you also get our pocket EKG reference. Okay, this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the ekg course you'll see examples of lectures okay why we developed this okay a lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning ekgs having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and you know still struggling so uh, my struggle is a struggle that i don't want you to have in learning them okay you can read all those introductory books but honestly they are not uh, enough okay and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less 
uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.